Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you had a nice time sleeping in. Okay, FDR. The country needs, and unless I mistake its temper, the country demands bold, persistent experimentation. FDR is famous for trying something. If it didn't work, trying something else. Uh, frustrated the heck out of the, the business-as-usual Republicans. FDR's New Deal offered an array of relief programs, alphabet soup, for the unemployed, sought to kickstart a recovery, and fundamentally reformed our economic system so that significant government intervention might prevent a future financial disaster. Relief, recovery, reform. <clears throat> All right, so I have decided that you're going to do, for the essay on FDR, you're gonna do one paragraph on the causes, another paragraph on the first New Deal, and another paragraph on the second New Deal. Okay, that's how it's gonna go. Oop, there we go. So the first New Deal is also called the first 100 days and now every president ever since has been judged on how much they accomplish in the first 100 days. So the first New Deal. In 1933, most of the New Deal programs were imp implemented in the first 100 days of FDR's presidency. They were designed to restore confidence and relieve the suffering of Americans. The second New Deal is in 1935 FDR passed a number of new programs during what is called the second 100 days, and the Supreme Court had ruled a number of, of his programs up here unconstitutional, and these new programs were meant to replace them. So even though some programs here look very similar to some programs here, that's because these, the Supreme Court ruled illegal some of those, and so he remade them so that they would pass the Supreme Court test. FDR planned to use government power to provide relief to the poor, to stimulate a recovery, and to reform the economy for the future. The Roosevelt reforms went far beyond previous legislation. They had to meet two pressing needs, to reorganize capitalism, which seemed broken at the time, in such a way to overcome the crisis, and to stabilize the system. Also to head off the alarming growth of spontaneous rebellion. Needless to say, if people are starving and out of work and losing their homes, there is rebellion afoot in that. Okay, I think you can see that fine. Of course we may have to change remedies if we don't get results. So he's famous for trying something and then trying something else. The Democrats in Congress gave FDR extraordinary blank check powers. We talked about blank check powers with Germany in World War I, meaning you write your signature on a check and they can put whatever they want, so whatever they need. Uh, to handle the depression, FDR was the most legislati legislatively powerful president ever. Remember, behind Lincoln and Washington, he's ranked third as presidents. He tries to solve the Great Depression, and then he also successfully leads us through World War II, even though he doesn't get to see the end of uh, victory in Europe. It's a month after he dies. FDR. Polio had polio and was paralyzed from the age of 39. Most Americans have no idea that he could not walk. Uh, again, the press willingly made sure that people did not realize that he was paralyzed. The New Deal was so abruptly different, it was startling. FDR's liberal plan, it's over here, progressive, progressive, progressive. The New Deal addressed the causes of the Great Depression. He was inspired by his cousin Teddy's Square Deal. Keynesian economics believed that planned deficit spending by the federal government could prime the pump of the US economy. His New Deal policies were inspired by the British economist John Maynard Keynes, and that's why they're called Keynesian economics. Then it means prime the pump, put government money in, put government money in, give people jobs, give people jobs, give people jobs. The more jobs they get, the more money they will spend. He does not, however, believe in just handing out money on the public dole. He doesn't believe in that. He has to do it in some instances, but mostly no. Doesn't Frank ever feel like just resting a while? Back to farm and forest. FDR and Congress passed the bulk of the New Deal in his first 100 days, the most active lawmaking period in US history, still today the most active, his first 100 days. That'll be your second body paragraph in your essay. FDR sought to end panic over a failed banking system and restore confidence in the US economy. So this entire PowerPoint and the last, I mean this entire video and the last video can help you to be able to write your essay. Uh, the one about the Roaring Twenties, we'll talk about the causes, we've talked about it, overproduction, um, laissez-faire economics, buying stocks on margin, uh, easy and available credit, people buying everything on time, um, cars, radios, vacuums, all of those are the causes. This part right here today will be the first second body paragraph, the first 100 days. 
and the third body paragraph, the second 100 days. In there, you can talk about the Supreme Court overruling him. You should talk about the Supreme Court overruling him. FDR sought to end panic over a failed banking system and restore confidence in the U.S. economy. His frequent radio addresses, fireside chats, helped restore optimism. He's the first person, radio's been around since the 20s, but he's the first person to use this as a, a pulpit to be able to speak to the American people directly. And he calms the American people with these fireside chats. He makes them believe they have hope. In just, 19, in just 1932 alone, 4,000 banks had collapsed. By 1934, only 61 that year. Capitalism was saved in eight days. FDR declared a bank holiday. You have to tell me about that. This is the very, very beginning of his administration. He was inaugurated on a Saturday in March of 33. And the very next day, he, he didn't even go to his inauguration parties, the inauguration ball, which is famous. He didn't even go. He went home and started working on, on the New Deal. And immediately on Sunday and then the next four days, he has a banking holiday. And when we come back from the banking holiday, the FDIC is created, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, so all of those people that had been running on the banks to take their money out, now instead were rushing to put their money in. He declared a bank holiday the day after taking office, shutting down the nation's banks for four days, five when you include the Sunday. Good old days are back again. In 1933, the 21st Amendment ended prohibition. Literally 1933. It's right after he takes office. Congress legalized light wine and beer and taxed its production to help the economy. The most significant reason why we put um, alcohol back on the slate for Americans is to have the tax money that was going to gangsters and mobs. All of that was still being sold, but there was no tax money from it. He's like, well, if people are drinking anyway, we might as well get tax money for it. So it's specifically 1933. <coughs> when Prohibition was introduced, this is John D. Rockefeller Jr. When Prohibition was introduced, I hoped that the evil effects of alcohol would be recognized I have slowly and reluctantly come to believe that this has not been the result. Instead, drinking has generally increased. The speakeasy has replaced the saloon. A vast army of lawbreakers has appeared. Many of our best citizens have openly ignored prohibition. Remember Harding, playing poker and drinking, smoking? Respect for the law has been greatly lessened, and crime has increased to a level never seen before. So, the end of prohibition, 1933. And that's the 21st Amendment. 18th is when we got prohibition. 21st is when we get rid of it. The New Deal sought to alleviate the financial woes farmers faced since the end of the First World War by providing government subsidies for those agreeing to limit production. You have to know that farmers were plagued ever since the end of World War I. In the Great War, they were um, called upon to provide food for the Allies and the food for the nation. And so when all of that came to a halt, they all of a sudden had overproduction. Remember, overproduction is one of the causes of the Great Depression. Overproduction of cars, of radios, of, of products, but also overproduction of crops. And so as a result, they were hurting in the 20s. And remember, like, uh, uh, um, Hoover said, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. Like, you can do it. And then, even worse, the McKinley tariff, not the McKinley, yeah. No, Smoot Holly tariff was passed. And 60% tariffs on, on imports into our country, which means that people could not ship their products into our country. So as a result, they did the same thing to us and blocked export of anything out of our country. And most importantly, farmers and crops were the number one export that we had, and they were blocked. They were just destroyed. Farmers had suffered since the Great War due to overproduction, which had driven prices and therefore profits down. <clears throat> farmers have this terrible uh, problem. They want to make as many crops as possible so they can sell them and get a lot of money because they've made a lot of crops. However, if they make too many crops, all of them collectively, then it floods the market which lowers the price because there's too many crops. So as a result, by making too many crops, they actually are harming themselves collectively because now they can't charge a high price for it because the person next door to them is charging less for their wheat. So now they have to charge less for their own wheat and back and forth and back and forth, these price wars of crops dropping. Dust Bowl continued through 1936. If you remember correctly, it started in 1930 and made things worse, so many farmers left for California. They were called the Okies, Oklahoma. The people that left Oklahoma are called the Okies. Um, their houses were absolutely a couple feet underneath dust. Uh, that was our fault. We, we planted crops and planted crops and planted crops and ruined the soil, and as a result, we made this dry, dry, dry soil. Like it was over planting of crops. We did it ourselves. 
So the AAA paid farmers to make fewer crops to eliminate surpluses. So we literally are having people starving during the Great Depression, but at the same time, the federal government, the AAA, is also paying farmers to make fewer crops. So a lot of people had a hard time with that. Supreme Court, you have to know, the Supreme Court killed the AAA in 1936, which angers FDR. Um, you have to know about the Supreme Court. We're gonna talk about a court packing scheme by FDR at the end of this PowerPoint. In 1934, FDR passed more legislation to suspend mortgage foreclosures for five years, and the Supreme Court killed that too, because that hurt businesses. So business people who had the mortgages, banks and businesses were not happy about that, but the people who were trying to survive, of course, were thrilled to be able to suspend their mortgages, but it gets overruled. In 1935, the Resettlement Administration removed near landless farmers to better land, so we helped to get them to a better place where they could continue to farm. Rural electrification. People had not had electricity, even though the big cities have had it for over 30 or 40 years, the, the, the city folk had it, the rural places did not. In 1935, the Rural Electrification Administration made electric power available to thousands of farmers for the very first time. However, the New Deal favored larger farmers and did a little or nothing for sharecroppers and tenant farmers. We talked about that, the people in the Deep South, um, the African Americans in the Deep South are, if you are black, you are 99% a sharecropper, but there are more white sharecroppers, poor white folks, than there are black people because there's more white people in the Deep South, so they are all equally burdened by this because it did nothing to help tenant farmers or sharecroppers. They still were ravaged by the Great Depression. Only big farms. So, New Deal for Industry. Bessemer steel making process ever since the 1870s or something. The New Deal increased government regulation of businesses engaged in interstate commerce from state to state and stimulated the housing industry through low interest loans. So people have lost their homes, so we're trying to get the housing industry going. People building houses gives them jobs, but as well will help people to get back into houses with low interest loans. Of course, big businesses hated that because it helps the small people, but not the businesses. To stimulate industrial growth, Congress passed the National Industrial Recovery Act in 1933. So the National Recovery Administration suspended antitrust regulations if businesses allowed unions to collectively bargain. So there's no antitrust laws. They suspend the antitrust laws on the one, one way that they can do that is to make sure that unions are allowed to collectively bargain, that they can strike. They're allowed to collectively bargain. They agree, everybody agreed. The NRA forced companies to lower their work hours so that more people could be hired and a minimum wage of 25 cents was established. 25 cents. The NRA, 25 cents, when was that? 19... 33, 1933, a minimum wage of 25 cents. You'd think $7.25 would be a lot higher. What is this, 67, 87 years later? It's not right. Schechter Poultry, FDR's struggles with the Supreme Court continued. Schechter Poultry versus the US denied Congress the authority to regulate intrastate commerce. Intrastate is between the state, within the state, and they said that is a state's rights issue, the 10th Amendment. They declared the NRA unconstitutional because the government, the federal government, is trying to take over states' rights. That's the 10th Amendment. We haven't covered that before, but it's states' rights. Schechter Poultry accused of 60 violations, a shipment of unhealthy chickens over state borders, the sick chicken case, the sale to a butcher of an unfit chicken, and the sale of two uninspected chickens. So they were sell selling chickens that were not well, which could mean diseased and then therefore make you sick. In 1934, the FHA was created to stimulate the home construction industry through small loans to householders. The FHA is very active today. Most people, most people will buy their very first home with an FH loan, FHA loan because it means that you have a lower down payment. Otherwise you have to pay 20% of a down payment. So if houses are $200,000, that's $40,000 uh, $40, that theoretically you would have. Nobody has that. Nobody has that. So the FHA makes it, I think it's like 5%, that you only have to have 5%. In 1937, the US, US Housing Authority lent money to states 
for low cost housings and housing in slum and shanty towns stopped growing for the first time. So we start making housing for the poor at these low interest rates because of the US Housing Authority. Um, most of you know these as, as housing projects for the incredibly poor. We still have housing projects where the government pays most of the rent. It is subsidized rent because people are exceedingly poor. Most of those are in the inner city. Rotten living, decent living through planned housing. Uh, Cure juvenile delinquency in the slums by planned housing. Some people say it did the opposite. Uh, the New Deal and the American Worker. The New Deal proved incredibly advantageous for the working class as federal programs provided short-term employment for millions and the Wagner Act empowered labor unions. Write it down, it's on the test, you have to know the Wagner Act. Wagner Act is good, good, good for labor unions and in throngs, people went flocking back to the Labor unions, yellow dog contracts are illegal. They can't give you a job if you promise not to join a, con a union. That's out, that's not possible any longer. Lots of people with the Wagner Act thronged back to unions. Look at this, come on. We talked about that in the video, that there were so many people riding the trains, they said that the, the people couldn't even go, the, the train employees couldn't even go across the top of the cars. Wow, relief for the unemployed was not the New Deal's most important goal. FDR feared people would become too dependent on the government. He did not want people on the public dole. He did not want to hand out, um, just hand out cash. He didn't believe in that. I don't think anybody can go year after year, month after month, accepting relief, the dole, without affecting his character. I don't know what this is all about. I didn't make these PowerPoints. I like it, though. I don't know why they're standing by mattresses, but I think it's cool. I don't know what they're doing. I just like it. What are all these women doing by these mattresses? What are you doing? What are you doing? They, they won't tell me. In 1933, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration gave $3 billion to states for direct relief payments or for wages on work projects. Uh, we now also have FEMA, F-E-M-A, Federal Emergency Management Administration, and FEMA are the people that go out there where the forest fires are. They go out there where the hurricanes are. I think that right now we have a tropical storm beta. We're into the Greek alphabet this season. We have tropical storm beta going back the same path that Laura went uh, toward Houston. And it's there, I think, today, right now. Um, just lots and lots and lots of rain and some high winds, 50, 60 mile per hour winds. So that's FEMA. That's FEMA. That's created later. But this is F-E-R-A. Why do you have mattresses there? I don't know. In 1933, the NRA created the Public Works Administration authorizing $4 billion worth of infrastructure programs and other job creating programs. We put so many millions of people to work building dams, building everything, infrastructure, roads, highways, everything to help people get back to work, but also to do amazing things for the American people. Um, most of these are still very much in use today, and they just keep restoring them and making sure that they are maintained. Most of these projects. The Civil Works Administration created 4 million jobs on temporary work projects, putting people back to work. Uh, Civil Works means uh, on things that have to do with the government. And the CCC. In 1933, the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, put millions of young men to work on environmentally beneficial projects. Uh, young men, um, teenage boys, younger men, even men that had some families, they got paid, it turns out it's $30. They got paid $30 a month. They only got $5 a month. They lived in camps and tents and everything, wherever their projects were. And the other $25 was sent back to their family so that they could survive. The family back home could survive. So, uh, the Civilian Conservation Corps. When I was going into my junior year in high school, I worked for the Youth Conservation Corps, and we went to the locks and the old canals and along the roadways, and we had weed cutters. Like, we didn't have weed eaters like you all have now. Like, we literally were using, like, the, the, the threshing kind of thing. We were just whacking weeds. Uh, it was a cool, fun job. We had to wear little boots and everything, and it was funny. It was good. Gave us money. So in 1935, the Works Progress Administration created eight 
million federally funded jobs. The whole point of the New Deal is to put people back to work, to put people back to work, to pay them, to put money back in the economy so people will start buying things. When they start buying things, then other people will get their jobs back and that we will have all of that stuff that was overproduced. We will have that sold. Then people can get back to work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like he did a lot. He did a lot. There's a lot of naysayers that say that he hurt, he hurt the economy more. Of course, the Republican business naysayers say, no way. It was terrible for the American people. It was terrible for the American economy that we should have just suffered through it, which is easy to say if you're not the, the poor that are homeless and starving. It's easy to say. But um, the 8 million jobs, there are lots and lots and lots of jobs that he created. And a lot of people opposed him. A lot of people opposed him. The Federal Writers Project hired unemployed writers, photographers, and artists to create travel guides, posters, brochures, uh, murals, all sorts of things to put even writers and artists back to work. The Wagner Act, the National, aka the National Labor Relations Board, replaced the NRA. The Wagner Act, and that's because the NRA was considered unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Uh, FDR has this con constant battle with the Supreme Court, and you'll see how that's going to play out in a minute. The Wagner Act was the Magna Carta of labor, ensuring workers' rights to organize and bargain collectively. As a result, union membership soared through the roof. In 1938, the Fair Labor Standards Act set minimum wage and maximum hour levels for industries involved in interstate commerce, interstate from one state to another state, and labor by children under the age of 16 was forbidden. Nicholas, you checked that this week. 1938 is when we finally say there's no child labor under the age of 16. But I think most of you work under the age of 16 now. Why? How? I don't know. I don't know how. What do they do about that? I don't think it's been changed. In 1935, um, John L. Lewis creates the Union Mi United Mine Workers and Committee for Industrial Organization, the CIO. Uh, today, the AFL, the American Federation of Labor, is combined with the CIO, and they are called the AFL-CIO, and they are industrial workers, they are mine workers, they are everybody that works in factories. AFL-CIO. Isn't that guy handsome? I feel like he should be a freaking movie star. Um, remember we talked about Dorothea Lange? Uh, the photographer didn't make the cut uh, during the Great Depression and, and the Dust Bowl. Uh, this is one of her famous photos. What a dapper young man. I just, I just love you. I just love you. FDR was accused of coddling labor unions at the expense of big business, but Democrats have enjoyed str strong union support in elections ever since. So we have had a shift that labor unions is now a democratic thing. We're starting to see a shift in politics between Republicans and Democrats. Bye bye. I like that guy. I wonder who he is. I like that guy. The New Deal established several socialist programs into our capitalist system. None more important than an old age pension called Social Security. Today, we still have Social Security. We still today have Social Security. And it's a, 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 a godsend. Um, your Nana and Papa don't have to work because at the age of 67, it's 67 now, it used to be 62 when my dad retired. Now it's 67. You can get fewer benefits at 62, I might do that. I haven't decided, I'm 58, I have four years to figure it out. Uh, Dorothea Lange, one of the most famous photos, this woman, one of the most famous photos. Unlike Hoover, rugged individualism, FDR allowed some direct relief to individuals. Some people, he allowed them to get direct relief money, payments of money, not a lot. The New Deal was a reform program that restructured American capitalism rather than replace it with a socialist system. In 1933, the Homeowners Loan Corporation assisted many households that had trouble paying their mortgages. Currently today, my nephew hasn't paid his mortgage in six months. He's been unemployed for six months from the pandemic. It is still the Homeowners Loan Corporation that can help him to be able to put off those payments to the end of his mortgage. So it was huge to help people not lose their homes. That was 1933, that's the first, the first 100 days. Senator Huey Long of Louisiana believed the New Deal did not do enough to promote social welfare. Long's popularity soared. This guy's crazy, this is incredible, this story. 100% tax on all income over a million dollars and inheritances of over $5 million, 100% tax. 
And then he says he's not a communist. I'm like, dude, that's communism. Like, that's literally communism. He says, communism? Hell no. This plan is the only defense this country's got against communism. Huey, what? Kingfish, what? Long share the wealth program proposed taxing the rich and giving $5,000 to every American family every year. That's a huge amount of money in the 30s. The Kingfish. On February 3rd, AKA the Kingfish founded uh, the Share Our Wealth Society and called on the American people to organize in order to accomplish following objectives. Limitation of poverty to a minimum of $5,000. Nobody would make less than 5,000 in the whole country. Limitation of wealth to a maximum of $10 million. Free higher education for all, what up? Employment for all by the shortening of hours, eight hour workday, full compensation for veterans, people have fought for our country, old age pensions, which haven't happened yet. Uh, FDR is going to make social security because Huey Long is pushing him toward that. Great national develop program, development programs to absorb the unemployed. I am convinced that he is the greatest political strategist alive. Huey Long is a superman. I actually believe that he can do as much in one day as any 10 men I know. He abstains from alcohol, he uses no tobacco, he is strong, youthful, and enthusiastic. Hostile communities and individuals move toward him like an avalanche once they see him and hear him speak. His greatest recommendation is that we who know him best love him most. Uh, Long was assassinated, but because of him, FDR had been forced to adopt more aggressive social programs. He was running for election against FDR, and he was becoming very, very popular. Somebody killed him. Pretty sketchy. Pretty sketchy. Uh, you have to know it tilted FDR even more left to, to more social programs that he was inspiring. And then Dr. Francis Townsend proposed a system of government pensions for retirees over age 60, again pushing us towards Social Security. $200 a month, which must be spent each month so that we could prime the pump of the economy. So that we'd have old age pensions, but you have to use that money every month. In 1935, the Social Security Act passed, providing social insurance for the elderly and unemployed. That's because those people were pushing him to the left. Social Security card. Isn't this socialism? Isn't this a teeny weeny bit of socialism? Yes. Ida Mae Fuller, the first recipient. And that is why we are called now a social democracy, that we have social programs as well as democratic and capitalist institutions. Uh, today, it's a mixed economy. That's what we're called. You have to know we're called a mixed economy because I'm standing in front of an empty classroom talking to a phone on my lamp. That's why we are called a mixed economy because I am a socialist teacher, because I am a public school teacher. I'm paid by the public. You have cops and roads and other institutions that are all government funded. That, those are socialist policies, but then we have a capitalist economy. So it is called a mixed economy. Social Security uses matching employee employer payroll contributions to fund retirement of workers. Social Security remains the most important New Deal program. It greatly expanded over the years. Okay, regulating the banks. I will stop. See you tomorrow.